The Los Angeles Rams sitting in first place in the NFC West on their lonesome. Who graded out well in this game? Jalen Ramsey, shutdown corner, cornerback number one in the NFL. We're going to discuss all these topics and more on this episode of the Locked On Rams podcast. You are Locked On Rams, your daily Los Angeles Rams podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Rams Nation, what is going on? As always, it is your boy, your host, Sosa Cremendas. And here is where things get a little bit different. Usually, I'm here to say I'm a fantasy analyst at PFF and your host here at the Locked On Rams podcast, your number one daily podcast covering the Los Angeles Rams and part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Half of that statement does remain true, but I'm no longer at PFF, so I'm not going to say that part. I will say, though, I did get a new job in the NFL or you know, covering the NFL, I should say. And uh, I'll disclose that in the third segment here. That was one of the special kind of topics in this episode that I wanted to discuss. And we'll talk about it more uh, later this week as well. But I'll save that for the remainder uh, for the end of this episode. Before we get into that, we know what this episode has to be. I mean, the Los Angeles Rams knock off the Minnesota Vikings by a score of 30 to 23, improved to 11 and four on the season. And this is now being recorded on Monday evening. So we know that the Cowboys did win their game, you know, by a little bit, almost like 50 points or something, 52 points. I can't even remember what the score was. Absolute thrashing. So the Cowboys are now in the second seed in the NFC. The Rams dropped from second to third, which is pretty much what we expected. And they're sitting in a good spot. This is a team that has caught heat at the right time. And when I say caught heat, not in the bad way or in the wrong way, I mean, they're starting to get that chemistry down. They're starting to get all that good play out. Uh, and really catching fire at the right time is what I meant. So things are good for this team, and we can dive into some of these numbers to look at from the PFF in-depth data that we still have access to. Thankfully, at the end of this week, I'm sure it's going to get yanked from me, so that's unfortunate. But um, this game was interesting. The Rams obviously had some up and downs. You still put up 30 points on offense, even though the offense didn't play that great, or at least your passing game wasn't that good, or at least your quarterback played really, really bad. And that's good news because Matthew Stafford throws three interceptions and the Rams still come out of this game with a 30 point performance on offense. I guess seven of those come from special teams. So we'll say 23 points on offense and a victory. And that is the kind of performance you put together when your quarterback plays a God awful game. You're going to take that every time. I promise you that. So we can begin with the offensive line. I feel like most of the offense was, you know, fairly easy to evaluate. There was no really, you know, anything crazy going on here. Sony Michelle, he ran the rock hard. Dude was fantastic. Cooper Cup steps up in the receiving game. Other than that, though, the receiver is fairly quiet. Quarterback Matthew Stafford was just awful in this game. We can call it what it is. The offensive line, though, these guys were fascinating to me because you look at these numbers here. Alaric Jackson, the left tackle, undrafted free agent and rookie that starts this game at left tackle. Gives up two pressures in this game. That was the most for the Rams. Coleman Shelton, center slash guard. He played a little bit of both in this one. Two pressures given up. Austin Corbett, one pressure. And then Sony Michelle, one pressure, which means Brian Allen, 10 pass blocking snaps, gives up no pressures. That's what you like to see. David Edwards, 38 snaps in this game. Plays left guard, plays left tackle. Hasn't played left tackle in the NFL before. I do think he played a bit at Wisconsin, though, if not you know a lot of left tackle there. And he gives up zero pressures in this game. He gets a dominant pass blocking grade. Just like Rob Havenstein, your bookend tackles giving up zero pressures each. I mean, you talk about a dominant performance when you don't even have Andrew Whitworth out there. That inspires confidence in these guys. David Edwards, a 90.1 pass blocking grade. And Rob Havenstein, 84.3. Both of those do fall in the elite category, as PFF calls it. So great, great stuff. I mean... Rob Havenstein comes back, doesn't skip a beat. He misses a game or two due to COVID. Dude is so underrated, so underappreciated. There's no doubt about that. And then, I mean, David Edwards having the wherewithal to be able to kick out to left tackle and play out there, kick back into left guard mid game and play the rest of the game there and a new left tackle outside of him. You're not, you know, playing with the same guy that you've played your whole career with in Andrew Whitworth, basically. You actually have a new guy out there this is a consistent communication type of you know unit that you got to play with. You got to be able to pass off stunts and take on guys. 
And the fact that he gives up no pressures, that is a very impressive performance. One other thing that I wanted to highlight here, and uh, this is probably going to shock some people, but dominant, dominant grade from Alaric Jackson. The guy we just mentioned gives up two pressures in this game. His pass blocking grade, not good. It was a 55.3. Probably what you expect from an undrafted free agent playing in his first game in his rookie season, kind of just being tossed out there. Yeah, not the best, but his run blocking grade, best on the team in this game, 90.8, absolutely dominant for an overall grade of 81.3. And you might be thinking, that sounds pretty good. And it is because one, that falls in the elite tier, I believe. And not only that, uh, but that was the highest graded offensive overall grade for any player that the Rams had on the offensive side of the ball. Alaric Jackson, if you had him as the highest graded Ram coming out of this game, I'm ready to sign a check over you. Just send it to me, a screenshot or proof, because that is a shocker. I mean, you talk about a guy that you're kind of just hoping, you know, doesn't cave in on himself here or doesn't cost you the game. And he comes out of it absolutely dominant with a run block grade like that. It makes a lot of sense why someone like Sony Michelle was able to consistently churn out eight, 10, 12 yard rushes. And Daryl Henderson gets in there. I think he only carried the ball one time. He gains 15, 16, 17 yards. He gets injured, which is unfortunate. But the Rams had all the success in the world running the football. Sort of begs the question why head coach Sean McVay goes away from running it. But in general, anytime you can run the ball like that, you're going to give yourself a really good chance to win football games. I mean, it's the easiest way to gain yardage. You don't have to rely on guys catching the football or you know, a quarterback not being inaccurate like we saw with Matthew Stafford there's a lot of gaps that can happen in the passing game if you can run and really just you know enforce your will on a team like that like the Rams did against the Vikings here I think you are got to be very inspired in terms of how they came out of this one offensively even with a terrible terrible game for Matthew Stafford you come away with a game where it doesn't feel like all went wrong you know in the past and I always hate to bring this up the Jared Goff era it's in the past we don't really care but I see the statistics. I think it said this was the first game that the Rams won in franchise history might have been or once, you know, this is the first one they won out of like 10 games, something like that, where their quarterback turned it over three or more times or threw three or more picks and they still came out with a victory. Should tell you, the Rams had no business winning this game. I mean, if you told me that your quarterback is going to turn the ball over three times in a game, I would be 97 to 99% sure you're coming out of that one with an L, with an L. Like there's no doubt about that. And yet they still somehow churned out a victory really goes to speak to the talent that this team has, the coaching staff that they built, the resiliency of these guys to keep fighting, keep scrapping. And not just that now, I feel like we're really at a place where, you know, the Rams, it still doesn't really feel like they have that one thing that they can always rely on. That's, you know, their identity as we call it in the NFL world, but it feels like they can really start to rely on a lot of different things when something isn't working. If your passing game doesn't work, get under center, run that football, rely on your defense, win the field position battle. Or, you know, if your defense is not playing well, go score 40. We know that they can. We've seen them do it. So, you know, you can rely on your offense in that regard. Or if you can't run the football, go throw it deep or go attack certain areas or use an extension of the running game like a jet sweep or, you know, screens to your receivers, these kind of things where – the Rams have shown the ability to do pretty much everything, even if it's just been in spurts here or there or, you know, just flashes here or there. You start to feel good about a team that can win in a variety of ways. And then we talked about the special teams. It's not really been something that's stood out for the Rams thus far. Uh, yeah, sure. Kicker Matt Gay has absolutely just an outstanding kicker, maybe the best in the NFL right now. I'm sure people would still say that's Justin Tucker, but the accuracy of the guy, the consistency, fantastic. Now they also have a return man that can spark some of the offense or go get points or win that field position battle for you on the defensive side of the ball. Even if just that, man, you got to feel good about where the Rams are right now. And I feel very, very good coming off a victory like that against the Minnesota Vikings. I think you've got to circle the Rams as one of those dangerous, dangerous teams in the NFC and in the NFL in general, that could certainly be one of the teams that are last standing for that Super Bowl race. In just a second here, we're going to flip to the defensive side of the ball, talk about some of these numbers for these guys. And then, of course, my special little announcement for the end there. Make sure you guys can always come follow us on Twitter to come follow along at QB's MEP at Locked On Rams and on YouTube at Locked On Rams. And thank you guys again so much for making Locked On Rams your first listen every day. Make sure to check out 
the ultimate college football playoff preview 2021 local experts, betting advice, and draft analysis. The most comprehensive college football playoff preview begins this Friday. Now we can pick up with the defensive side of the ball. And here's where things start to get interesting, right? Some of the guys that I even mentioned that had great games, I guess didn't grade out all that well. We talked about Troy Reader on yesterday's episode saying, you know, this is a guy that played really well, stood out, and uh, his grade wasn't that great. It was only a 60.4. That was the 10th highest graded player for the Rams uh, coming out of Sunday's game. But in general, I thought he played great. I'm not going to put my life and my be all end all into the PFF grades, right? This is just something that we can sort of work off of. Uh, but there was a handful of guys that really graded out well. And most of them, you could probably assume who they were, right? It's not exactly rocket science to see who's standing out, who's playing well. Uh, Leonard Floyd, sixth highest graded player, 70.3 overall grade. Number five, Traven Howard at 72.1. Another guy that I thought stood out. So that is really good to see him up there. And he was fantastic in coverage. He had the best coverage grade of the day at 80.7. Uh, and that is something that you have to be excited about. Your ears sort of perk up there. When you think about inside linebackers that can cover in the NFL, man, that gives you the advantage that you need in the day and age that we play in right now with the NFL. It's a space game, right? You look at number four, Jalen Ramsey. No shocker there. Dude was absolutely lights out. 74.1 grade. Number three, Ernest Jones, the guy that the Rams lose and that Trayvon Howard replaces, uh, 75.9 grade. Again, this is a guy that we've talked about now. Fantastic player. Even going back to last week's episode, I wanted to spend some time sort of delving into him and uh, giving him his flowers, I guess you could say. And it really just sucks now that he's hurt. And we actually did get an update on him. I believe it was a uh, high ankle sprain. So week to week, and it sounds like, you know, the Rams are kind of, Fingers crossed, hoping he can get back in time for the playoffs, which uh, is a little bit concerning because you would love to have this guy for the next two weeks, especially against two teams that are going to run the ball. But in general, you know, the Rams are going to make the playoffs. They've already clinched the berth there. Let Ernest Jones kind of relax and get 100% back to speed. And, you know, when the playoffs roll around, maybe you have a bit of a question mark if Traven Howard continues to play well. Not to say that Ernest Jones shouldn't be out there. But maybe Traven Howard and Ernest Jones should be out there together. I think that's something that should be in the back, you know, of defensive coordinator Raheem Morris's mind, Sean McVay's mind, everyone's mind right now. I mean, if you got guys that are performing at super high levels, I'm of the you know mindset that you should be playing them. And you know, if Traven Howard can string together another two good games, three on top in total, and you know Ernest Jones should be out there because he's got the speed and he's your future and he's played great this season you might be looking at a new pairing and there's nothing wrong with figuring out who your best players are at this time. It's kind of weird, right? You'd like to ideally know before the season even begins, but anytime you can figure out an advantage, even if it's just player personnel, you got to take that into effect and into account. So that's something I'm sure we're going to dive into moving forward. Uh, the last two players that were the highest graded for the Rams here, number two, Ashawn Robinson, 77.9 grade. And then number one, yeah, surprise, surprise, Aaron Donald, 89.4 grade. Uh, yeah, these guys are great. I mean, they gave up 23 points technically, but as we know, you know, I'm not going to knock them whatsoever for this. I mean, the Rams turn over the ball inside their own 10-yard line, I think once, if not twice. Twice, I believe, in the red zone for sure. And these guys really had their backs up against the wall and still came away with only allowing 23 points. And really, at the end of the day, they are the reason that the Rams won this game because any kind of slip up here or there, the Vikings probably score, you know, early in that game in the first quarter where Trayvon Howard gets an interception. They might score on one of those other drives after Stafford throws a pick uh, and, you know, the Vikings are inside the red zone, yet they hold them to three. Uh, so definitely not going to knock them whatsoever uh, for that kind of a performance. I thought they were outstanding. And still, more kudos to defensive coordinator Raheem Morris. He's had these guys balling, and a lot of us gave him a lot of flack earlier this season. So if we're going to be hard on him, you got to be – you know, ready to kind of put your ego aside and say, this guy's been fantastic as well. And I think as it stands right now, you know, we might be looking at a coach that come the end of the season might be getting some head coaching hype. I don't know. I wouldn't rule it out just yet. And uh, I'm sure, you know, while it hurts the Rams to have to say goodbye to coaches all the time, at some point, you know, you like to see these guys succeed and go on to do bigger things as well. And I guess that takes us into some of these coverage and pass rushing numbers, because these are typically things that are harder to see in real life. And I usually like to wait a day for PFF to be able to go back and rewatch because these numbers 
can be adjusted within the first 24 hours. So, you know, it's hard to always drop a number and then 10 hours later, it's just a different number. It always just changes the, uh, skews the perception really of what we have of these guys. So some of these didn't really change. Some of them did. I mean, you look at Ernest Jones gives up 21 yards in this game. That's fantastic. Troy reader, 31 yards, Taylor Rapp, 28 yards, Dante Dion, 21, Traven Howard, one catch given up one single catch for 14 yards, only a 33.3 passer rating. That was the lowest of everyone on the team. You actually have a higher passer rating. I think it's 39.6. If I'm not mistaken, if you throw the football into the ground, every single snap. So Kirk cousins actually had a lower passer rating throwing at Traven Howard than he did. If he had just thrown it away every play. So that really explains to you uh, how good this guy was in his first action really this season and coming right off of IR. And this is a guy that I think we're going to continue to highlight, man. We talked about him in the off season. I genuinely thought he was going to start at inside linebacker. And I'm starting to feel pretty good about that prediction right now, because, you know, at one point I was starting to think, ah, maybe I was too high on a guy that, you know, hasn't really proven himself yet in the NFL. Uh, but now we look at it. He did great in this game and it starts to kind of, you know, kick that gear in your mind where you start to think now, did we make a mistake not starting this guy? Did he need more snaps to this point? And again, it's fine if they made the mistake, but I think that this guy continues to stand out. And I've seen some flashes in years past in coverage in, in you know, small spurts here or there, not ready to crown him as the next Ray Lewis, but we really have to keep our eyes on him to see if he's going to be the next guy there to Ernest Jones. And then pass rushing aspect, uh, two guys that I want to highlight here. Aaron Donald leads the way, seven total pressures in this game, a sack. And Greg Gaines, a sack as well. And five total pressures, that's the second most for the Rams in this game. No other player with more than two. And I think that's sort of a concern here, right? Because Vaughn Miller, this is a guy that the Rams traded a lot for. A second round pick, a third round pick, and he's a free agent at the end of this year. I don't think the returns have been you know, what we've really expected so far. And I'm not really sure why that is still feels like he's not hundred percent comfortable just yet. And don't get it twisted. It's not like he's a bad player. The guy has been fantastic against the run. That's only half the battle though. And I think you expected a little bit more out of that pass rushing aspect it only has one sack with the Rams. And it was, you know, more or less a coverage sack last week against Russell Wilson, not that many pressures. It feels like, so, you know, we'll see ultimately how it shakes out, but I will say at the end of the day, you don't trade for a Von Miller to go help you in week nine. That's not what they did. You trade for Von Miller. So when you're in the divisional round of playoffs, when you're in the conference championship, when you're traveling, you know, to wherever it may be, and Tom Brady's back there dropping back on third and seven, or Aaron Rodgers is dropping back on third and 11, that's what you're trading for Von Miller for. So the early returns, you know, they're solid. They're not maybe meeting expectations, but at the end of the day, all it takes is a few plays in the playoffs when it's most important, when he steps up the most, when he's really shined in his career. And it'll be easy to say that trade was 100% worth it. So we're going to continue to keep our eyes on that just to see if things change for Von Miller going in throughout the rest of this regular season. And of course, in just a second here, we're going to transition into the final segment. And not just that, but I want you guys to make sure to tune back in tomorrow. I haven't talked to Brad yet, but I think he might be coming back on. And I hope he is because, man, we got a lot to talk about going into the second last week of the season. Los Angeles Rams, Baltimore Ravens, week 17. Oh, that is weird to say. There's one more week after that. And the good news is if you guys want to get in on some betting action, Bet Online will have you covered not just through the holiday season, but throughout the rest of the season as well with more props, odds, and lines than ever before as football continues its march through the college bowl season and the pro football playoffs. Bet Online remains your number one spot for all these sports action this season. So go ahead to their website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. All you have to do to get that is use the promo code locked on to receive that bonus from football to basketball, NHL, boxing, UFC, right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait. Make sure to take advantage of all the amazing offers available right now for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports, bet online where the game starts. And thank you guys so much for always making Locked On Rams your first daily listen every day. Your second, go check out Locked On Bets. These guys will get you right for your betting game. Maybe go take that over to betonline.ag. Help fill up those pockets a little bit after an expensive holiday season. I'm sure your daily one stop shop for all your gambling needs. Locked On Bets, hosted by your boy Q with expert analysis and insight. 
from Lee Sterling. And now we'll pick up with the final segment here. We will dive into some interesting news, and I'm not really sure what the point of it was, but the Los Angeles Rams, Baltimore Ravens, Week 17. This is being played in Baltimore. It was originally scheduled, I think, for 4.05 or 4.25 Eastern. That's where I'm at. Uh, I guess that would be 10 and uh, 1 for the West Coasters, the LA local listeners. So uh, we'll go by Eastern time, just easier for me. They moved that game from 4 to the early window at 1 o'clock. So I'm not really exactly sure why. Uh, don't really know what to make sense of. I'm sure the NFL probably had a reason for doing it. I'm sure they're going to you know, explain why they did it. But uh, that is something interesting to note, just in case you guys haven't heard. The game was moved, not from you know, the 4 p.m. to a Sunday night football flex, which is probably what it should have been. Baltimore Ravens, good football team, and they're fighting for their playoff lives right now. The Los Angeles Rams, yeah, they're clinched, but that is essentially a playoff atmosphere in December, or I guess it's going to be in January to begin that month. So, you know, we love it. I don't know. I think that would have made more sense than probably kicking it to the early window where it's going to be jumbled in with, you know, seven, eight, nine other games, if not even more like there is now. But Either way, you know, it's not going to make much of a difference for me. Just letting you guys know, I'm sure some of you guys probably wanted to go to the game if you're a Baltimore uh, local or whatever the case is. So you can change your plans accordingly. Uh, and that takes us, I guess, into the final segment here. And I'll dive into more of this, you know, throughout, the, throughout this week and going into uh, the later part of this week. But I wanted to tell you guys so I didn't just drop a nuke on you, it felt like. And this, I guess, is going to be our final week here together at Locked on Rams with me, your host, Sosa Kermenges. And I don't like sharing this news. Uh, it's unfortunate, but I was uh, gracious enough to receive an offer from another company called Underdog Fantasy. And uh, it's going to be taking up all my full time. And for me, this is a, a gracious opportunity. And I'm honored and I'm blessed. And, and I'm really thankful uh, for you know Underdog believing in me and taking that shot on me. Uh, because at the end of the day, if you follow me on Twitter, like I always tell you guys, or, you know, if you follow me somewhere else, you see uh, the personal side of me, not just, you know, the football aspect of it. You know that uh, working in football at the end of the day has really been my number one goal. That's been, you know, my ultimate dream and something I've shot for and, and strived for uh, for many years. So this is uh, finally coming to fruition for me over the last two years. I have worked full time in football, PFF, as well as Locked on Rams here concurrently but I can no longer do it together, unfortunately. So uh, upon conclusion of this week, I won't be your host anymore, which is just terrible. And uh, it sucks. You know, I hate leaving you guys. It's been an honor to be your host. Uh, taking over after Brad has just been fantastic. Getting him back on the podcast has been amazing. Uh, and he's been such an invaluable help to me, not just, you know, throughout this process, getting me prepared, you know, transitioning into me being the host, but uh, just in general and a great guy and a great friend. So I wanted to give him a shout out and I'll give more of these people, you know, shout outs at the end of the week. Like I mentioned, I don't want to delve into it all that too much uh, right now. And I'm making sure that people know in specific as well. I've reached out to everyone. So don't worry. It's not just going to be on the podcast. I will give people their roses or their flowers as they say, while they can smell them. So uh, really just wanted to thank you guys so much for always supporting us here at Locked on Rams. It's been an incredible season for the Los Angeles Rams. Uh, it sucks that we won't be able to finish it out together. I wish I could have stayed throughout the rest of the regular season going into the playoffs. I'm sure the Rams are going to go far. Uh, you know, now at this point, I'm going to be a listener as well. I'm not going to be the host and I don't know exactly who's coming up after me, uh, a female male, who it might be. I have no idea. I'm sort of out of the loop there as well, but you know, I'm going to help transition them into this role when I do figure out who is uh, coming after me. And I just want to tell you guys that it's just been an honor, man. Thank you so much for always supporting, for always listening. We've hit record numbers month after month after month. It's been crazy here. Uh, it's been so fun to cover this team. Obviously, they never give us really a lack of topics, whether it's trades, free agents, uh, trading guys away, uh, winning football games. You go a whole month losing football games. So, it's been a roller coaster ride, but it's been great. We got to the playoffs together last year. We had a super fun season this year together. And I'm 100% certain that the Rams are going to get into the playoffs again this year, make their mark felt. Unfortunately, it's not going to be with me. It will be with someone else. But I want to urge you guys to just keep supporting, keep listening, give the new host a chance, whoever that might be. Like I said, I don't know right now. Uh, and it's going to be awesome, man. I can't wait to be a listener as well. And just really from the bottom of my heart, thank you guys so much. It's been amazing, man. I took over from Brad after he built up everything. He showed up and it was just 
a, a piece of grass there, you know, just land. And this guy brought a shovel. He brought a screwdriver really with his hands and dug it all up and put the foundation down, built up, you know, the two by fours and the frame of the house and threw on a roof and did everything, the outside, the masonry, and then handed it to me and said, all right, run with it. Let's see where you go. And uh, made sure that I was on a track to uh, success and the fast path to success really at the end of the day. And all I had to do was come in, throw a little insulation up, a little bit of drywall, you know, a little bit of hardwood flooring and whatnot. And uh, now I'm passing it off to someone else, man. It sucks that it's coming to an end. It's been a great year and a half. Um, and I just want to thank you guys so much for always supporting, always listening, challenging, you know, sharing the comments in the YouTube as well. Uh, sharing the podcast to other people, man. It's been such exponential growth. It's been crazy to see the numbers day after day, month after month, uh, year after year. And it looks like we're on pace to, you know, continue crushing records every month, every year. So uh, it wouldn't be done without you guys. That's 100% sure. I know that. It's been so, so fun, so awesome being your host here. And we've got a few episodes left, so I don't mean to get all, you know, teary-eyed and uh, down on you guys. We have a few more left. We'll continue to cover this team. I got a crossover left with Kevin Ostriker, the host of Locked On Baltimore Ravens, Locked On Ravens there. And uh, then we'll usher you guys into this second last week of the regular season. It's been awesome. Thank you guys so much. As always, you know what to do. You can go follow us on Twitter at QB's MEP at Locked On Rams and on YouTube, of course, at Locked On Rams. Go hit that little bell notification, that icon. Be notified every time we post on YouTube every single day, 8 a.m. Eastern. Please subscribe or follow to get our latest episodes, content, breaking news, and a whole lot more.